out in the high desert in the great American Southwest. West. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM. John, welcome to the program. It's good to have you with us. You're with us. You're with us. You're with us. Welcome back to Coast to Coast PM, the number one unofficial Coast to Coast AM podcast. For any new listeners, this is a podcast where two brothers analyze the world's largest overnight paranormal radio show called Coast to Coast AM. My name is Paul, and I'm the guy that listens to this inexplicable radio show here with my brother. Hey, it's Chris. I'm the abbot to your Costello, except I know who's on first base. Hey yo, hey yo, good one. That's hey throwback. Yo. Yeah, throwback we love a throwback. For you. We love a good throwback. Yeah, well, dude. Chris, what do you got? We got an episode today. Well, I know that because we're sitting here recording over Zoom. That's an excellent point, and I'm excited about this one because you want to know what we're talking about. What are we talking about? We are talking about high strangeness in the Mojave Desert. Okay. That's interesting. So just like all the weird stuff that's happening in the desert. All the weird stuff. It's zinger after zinger. Today we are covering werewolves, demons, highway ghosts, spook lights, and crazy men who talk to aliens from Venus. Whoa, whoa, wee, whoa. Yeah, there's a lot. just covered everything. It's it's basically our whole show in one episode. In one episode. This is the only ep we needed to do. We're probably going to shut down after this. Yeah, so sorry, this is the to, end. <laughs> sorry to everyone who's been enjoying the, the end. We had a good run. We had we, a good run. I, I'm I'm proud of it, but sometimes you do have to just let it go. But Chris, before we do that, we got to go check in with our good friend Tim Banal at the Coast to Coast AM blog. Tim Banal. So what's this he, what's is he talking about today. This is a fun one. Uh, okay. The, the headline of Tim Banal's uh, article. Bizarre silent clown report leaves Washington neighborhood unsettled. Well, yeah. So you hit a couple of terrifying prospects right here, didn't you? The silent clown. I want some noise, some jovialness to my clown. Silent clown is scary. Some squeaky horns, you know? Yeah. A little car that has six clowns inside of it. These are how I want. I want a, a clown rolling on a large ball. Mm-hmm. These yeah, are all like, things I need in my clowns. Cirque silence, du Soleil. Yeah, silence is not one of them. Well, Cirque du Soleil is a little bit more of the silent clown. That's true, but they are doing fun things. You yeah, know, climbing right. up poles and whatnot. Yes. Well, Chris, let's jump in. So a neighborhood in Washington state is understandably on edge after a resident claimed that an unsettling silent clown had broken into her home. Whoa, burglar yeah. silent clown. Not good. Burglar. According to a local media report, the unnerving case occurred in the central part of the state's Whidbey Island earlier this month when an elderly woman phoned the police with a truly terrifying tale. It seems interesting because an island isn't the best place to rob people. You, know, I didn't think about that. That's an excellent point. It's difficult to get away. It's difficult to get away and dress as a clown. With the big floppy feet, I imagine it's even more difficult. Probably, oh. probably. Can't move as fast. Uh, although maybe there's some sort of uh, clown boat that he jumped into. I'm yeah, not it's a clown sure. boat. The well-informed and many people are talking about clown boat. <laughs> so shortly after midnight, the woman said a man dressed in a clown costume had entered her home eerily when she encountered the haunting Harlequin. Great alliteration. Nice. That was very good. Go, Timmy. The individual did not say a word, opting instead to hold up a sign, which said that he was robbing her before subsequently vanishing into the night without taking anything. My dude was literally silent. He was. He had a sign. He said, had a I'm sign. You. They said, I'm robbing yeah. Was it in funny script? Was it like a comic sans script? I, you know, I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Let's you know, let's make the script funny. A I'm goofy. robbing you, silent clown. Add Stop. some wingdings at the end just for flair. <laughs> now that would be goofy, dude. If the whole sign was in wingdings, and see, she's like, I can't read yeah. that. That's the and problem. Then he, like with mimes robbing. being robbed and stuff. 
Listen, nowadays, whenever you get robbed, you don't get a show. If you're going to rob me and take my stuff, at least give me a bit of a, a show, you know, a little clown. Show. Yeah. Make me laugh. A little showmanship is always is always appreciated. Yeah. Ease the pain. So as is custom with creepy clown encounters, because this is something okay. that happens, happens a lot. Often. Yeah. Right. There there was no sign of the individual when cops arrived, nor any indication that someone had broken into the home. Police are fairly certain that the woman believed her story to be true, though they did concede that the call could have been the result of some kind of mental health episode. Ooh, if you're seeing clowns that hold up signs that say you're getting robbed, you're going to need to get some strong medication. That's yeah, that's, you know, you, you, some schizophrenia stuff there. I did listen to a documentary with a guy who had schizophrenia who said that like one day he saw like Satan in his backseat of his car, which was really right. terrifying. There's some that scary stuff. You can see. Yeah. Yeah. What but, are you doing here, Satan? But also, she's an old lady. I feel like that would have showed up before now. Like she would know. Right. At yeah. least I hope so. Yeah. This wouldn't be the first silent clown spotting, you would think. Yeah. But yeah, American healthcare system, man, you never know what you're going to get. So that's right. <laughs> that is true. That said, many of the community are concerned that the incident genuinely occurred, with one resident declaring on social media that. Quote, this is not a gag, exclamation mark. We believe she was unharmed because she was compliant, calm, and cooperated. One thing that seems certain is that the people living in the area would probably be wise to lock their doors at night, lest the silent clown strike again. Striking fear into the hearts of these Washington State Islanders, dude. That like, seems to cool. be Tim's point there, is to scare the shit out of Washington State. Yeah, dude, like... Uh... Don't scare them. They're, they live in an island. Can you ever be certain that it's not real? There's probably clowns breaking in everywhere. It's like that one place in Canada where they leave all the doors open of their cars because there's bears that roam around. And it's like a community thing to leave your door unlocked. So if you're getting chased by a bear, you can get into the house quickly. Maybe this clown was just seeking refuge. And he was saying, yeah. I'm being robbed by some kind of animal and I needed to hide in your house. Yeah, that, I mean, that's completely fair. Maybe it was an emotional robbing because right. he didn't get a good show to his last performance. There's a lot right. of explanations here. Yeah. Don't go around attacking the first clowns you see. Listeners. Yeah. But if you are uh, a listener from Washington, be wary. There are clowns on the loose. Is, is yeah, there's playing. silent clowns on the loose. You'll never hear them. You'll never hear it's them. Come. Too late. It's it's an issue. Well, that was our Cuscus AM blog post for the day, Chris. So I think it's time to jump into the episode. Yes, dude. Mojave, high strangeness. So we will be listening to George Norris' interview with M.L. Berman, who wrote the book Mojave Mysteries. This was aired in okay. July of 2022. All right. So we're fairly recent. Pretty recent. You know, we've done a couple old Art Bell ones. We'll probably go back to Art Bell next episode, but wanted to get some George Nori in again. Yeah. You know, got got to love your George here. So uh, M.L. Um, is a desert enthusiast, outdoorsman, and author, which is nice. Well, so, how does one, is that a job one can have, a desert enthusiast? I, I don't think it's something they'll pay you, you for. Don't, you don't get paid for that? You just, that's a, just a, an adjective you know, when, that when ML likes using about himself. I think that's a, a real sign that you're kind of fluffing your bio when you use terms like desert enthusiast. Like, that's not an actual thing. I'm a food enthusiast in that I eat food every day. You know, that's fair. If you wrote a book, dude, put that in the bio. Yeah, Big I'm food doing guy. that. Big food guy. So you can find his book, Mojave Mysteries, on Amazon for $6.99. And he also has a YouTube channel called Mojave Mysteries, which is nice. Well, there you go. Keep it keep it simple, stupid. Yes. And uh, the other things that he writes, because he does not just write nonfiction books about paranormal happenings in the Mojave Desert. He also writes Western horror novels about a uh, cowboy monster hunter. That's actually pretty cool. I know I really like this guy. I actually really like this guy. That's a cool that he he uh he cornered the market on western horror for sure. There's nothing like the combo of a cowboy that hunts monsters and like vampires and stuff. Like that's yeah, just that's good old American good. fun. It's very good. Very dark dark tower, Stephen King. 
very good. Roland Desk Chain doing the damn thing. You know, that's probably what it was for me is that it's very Dark Tower. So, yeah. you know, yeah. props to him. Uh, I really, this was one of the ones where I was like, hey, good job, George. This is the kind of thing that you should have on the show. More <laughs> of this, Georgie. More of this, less, uh, you know, uh, aliens are psychically communicating with me. More of this stuff. Number one. Let's Where jump we... in. George Norris starts every interview with the same question. So, uh, ML, how'd you get it's in? A great question. How'd you how'd you start getting the weird desert stuff? Always being a history buff and and a fan of bizarre things and crazy stories, uh, I started hearing things from people that were very intriguing. And then, you know, once you spend enough time by yourself out in the desert, you start to encounter things of your own, which add to the equation. So I think that's fair. If you do spend a lot of time by yourself in the desert, you're probably going to see a bunch of weird stuff. You're going to see a bunch of weird stuff and you're going to be around other weird people who also want to be alone in the desert. Yeah, that's just a weird situation where you're like, I like to be alone in the desert. That's not super normal. Yeah. You should probably find a friend at that point. So we're going to jump off, Chris, with our first weird cryptid of the day, the Death Valley Werewolf. Ooh. Let's talk about some of the strange creatures that are out that way. The Death Valley Werewolf. What have we uncovered here? A couple of people. One guy that was up in Death Valley, and he said one night driving back through Death Valley, he saw what he said looked like I guess what today they would call a dog man or a, a werewolf type entity, you know, some mm -hmm. uh, thing that looked like canine, but would go to two legs as it ran at times. And he had seen it by the road and watched it uh, run off through the desert. And then someone else a little farther south had reported the same thing that they had stopped to uh, relieve themselves and saw this thing sitting out on a ledge watching them. And when they moved back to the car, it stood up and ran off. And they described it as looking like a werewolf. So I, I ran with the werewolf of Death Valley uh, as a title. But so a little werewolf creature running around. Well, little werewolf. It seems like a hot place for a werewolf. You know, it, it would be for how hairy they are. Yeah. Also, ML is underselling the Death Valley werewolf at the end where she's like, well, this doesn't look like a werewolf, so I'll just go with that. It's like, no, dude, it's a werewolf. It's a werewolf. You I have like to get in. I would have prefer it to be more of a were coyote, I feel like. You know, that would be more fitting. Right. A werewolf out in the desert, they're just not doing it for me, right? That now. that does feel like something that happens in Europe, you know, or Europe. like the yeah. Timberlands, mm -hmm. you know, that's where you need a good werewolf, you mm -hmm. know, dark forest, not a the hottest desert in North America. Well, and there's less places to hide as well if you're a giant werewolf. Right. Yeah. Where are you going to go? Where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? It's not going to work well, Chris. There were more sightings of this werewolf and this werewolf also killed some creatures. Oh, because I, I came, I hiked about three miles in from my camp to this rocky area where i knew there was this hidden water hole and i got up close to it and he goes all of a sudden i got the weirdest feeling like like my skin was crawling like my hair standing on end and he goes i instinctively stopped took the bird shot out of my shotgun and put two uh shells in with buckshot and he goes there was a hedge separating me from the water hole and as i approached it i had my gun at my shoulder because i i just felt something was there because all of a sudden there was this grunt and this figure came hurtling through the air over the hedge and landed at my feet Jeez. As I look, he goes i looked down it was a dead foal donkey here's the thing he said its back was snapped in half like something had just smashed his back because it was bent almost u-shaped in the wrong direction slaughtered that donkey took care of that donkey yeah dude that would be really scary if you're just out in the desert and then like you see a weird werewolf creature and then it throws a dead donkey at you yeah that's, that's very scary also what but why would the werewolf be throwing a dead donkey like that's a very strange you thing would to think do. the werewolf would want to keep the donkey to eat Maybe this was some sort of like peace offering. Yeah, there honestly. you go. It's a reverse of the Bigfoot offering. 
Yeah, this is the problem, man. People it, always think that these cryptids are malevolent. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah, he's like, you look hungry and famished. Partake in my dinner with me. Yeah, I mean, that would be the, the way to interpret this, man. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but this guy took it as a bad thing. The breaking of bread, the sharing of salt. It's the nice way to go about it. But this guy, yeah. this guy just ran away. He bailed. He yeah, wasn't down. He said, I'm not sticking around for no, you know, broke back donkey. I'm looking down at this thing going, what the hell? And he goes, all of a sudden this roar comes from behind the ledge or hedge. That, he goes, it sounded like someone ripping a grizzly bear in half. And then it took off through the bushes on the other side, and I heard brush cracking And it, as it ran away from me. And I'm like, well, did you go over to the, the water and look? Like if there were tracks near the, mm -hmm. water, you know, hell no. He goes, I got the message loud and clear that this thing didn't want me there. So I started hiking back. Are there bears in the Mojave? So I don't believe there are bears in the Mojave. There are bighorns. There are predators like mountain lions, coyotes, and bobcats. But I, I don't believe there are any bears there. No I know a lot of bears have actually gone extinct in California. Well, and here's another thing that I, I i've just been thinking about is that it was like some kind of condor or something because i know some of the larger birds of prey are big enough to to carry small animals you know like a baby a baby mule or something could a could a condor carry a dead donkey though he said a foal so that's a baby so oh. depending on the size of it you're right you're right possibly <laughs> just a big bird just dropped a, a baby I, donkey on yeah, this guy probably just and that would kind of ex explain the broken back and stuff yeah if he yanked it up real fast or something yeah that could make sense well there's no real evidence of the werewolf is is what ml further gets into but there is one guy one guy who has pictures of the mojave werewolf chris oh okay but he won't give them up not sharing them. He's not sharing them, man. He's not sharing them. He's not going to share them. Okay. Well, which, you know, not the coolest move. No. Side of the. And you've, of you've seen these photos, though? Well, here's the here's the thing. I I was trying to get them, and I go, well, what was the, he goes, the one that you can see, you can see the outline of a shoulder and, like, the side of a head as it's reaching into the cage. I'm like, you got to get me an interview with this guy or or a copy of the photo. And he goes, okay, I'll try. And uh, came back a couple weeks later. He goes, the guy doesn't want any publicity because he showed it to me. He showed it to some people in his family and they all ridiculed him. And he doesn't want some guy spreading it on the internet. Just couldn't get to it, man, which is sad. Dude, that's like so lame. <laughs> uh, not, yeah, I have some great photos of, of UFOs and aliens coming out of the UFOs, but I don't really want the publicity for it. I, I don't want anyone to make fun of me, man. I don't man. want anyone to know that I have these pictures. So just, you know, go away. And you don't have to. You can say, don't use my name in your book. Or something. That's just why show I, us the pictures. I'm questioning the veracity of this story because of how dumb that is. Yeah, that was that was garbage because basically it was ML's contact had a buddy who had pictures and then the buddy wouldn't give them up. But it's like yeah. either either the contact is lying or the buddy's lying and doesn't actually have anything. Something's a little fishy there. But kind of reminds me of Spaceballs a little bit with a uh, dark helmet when he's like your brothers, sisters, boyfriends, cousins, girlfriends, former roommates <laughs> said it. That's basically it. Like there's a guy out there. He's got. Yeah. But also, here's the thing. In case this is real, if someone comes to you and they say that they have pictures of a werewolf, don't make fun of them. Yeah, don't make, don't fun, make fun of them. them. I want to like, see the pictures. Let's see the pics. Let me see the pics, and then from the pics, I will make fun of you or not. Yeah, then then decide. But yeah, it's just, you know, you got to be cool about it. And here's the other thing, too, right? You got to make sure to encourage him to send it to a cryptozoologist, right. okay? Someone, yes. an expert in the field there of werewolves, you, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. they exist. They exist. Yeah, a lichenologist. Yeah, just because you can't get a PhD in that doesn't mean that you can't dedicate your life to it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's really what the show's about in the end. I was going to say, we've seen a number of those types of people already. <laughs> a lot of those people. Yeah, <laughs> just because you're not college educated doesn't mean you're not educated. Doesn't mean you can't speak with incredible certainty.
for sure. That's right. So our second cryptid of the day, Chris. Oh, back to back cryptids. Back to this guy was just shooting from the hip, dude. He, he, yeah, I, you you want cryptids? I got him, dude. The Demon Flyer of Death Valley. Oh, that's a great name. Good. He's got a lot of good names. He's got a flair. Yeah, Demon Flyer of Death Valley is very good. Him and Tim Banal should sync up. They they yeah. could really get something going. Yes. ML, tell us about the Demon Flyer. All right. Well, the Demon Flyer. Um, originally, I had gotten an email from an elderly gentleman up in Death Valley who had a cabin. And one night coming home, he had seen this thing on the side of the road picking at some roadkill. And when he got up to it, it stood up and turned around. And he described it as looking like a, about a five-foot-tall, black, leathery-skinned, what looked like a winged human but without arms. And that its face had red eyes, which they all seem to have red eyes for some reason. And uh, uh, it looked female. And it hissed. He actually audibly heard a hiss, and it took off into the air. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool, though, dude. That one's pretty weird, man. That was it's, it's It very much sounds like Mothman, honestly. Yeah. But here, I got a, a little point. You know, I'm thinking of all these cryptids, and one of the commonalities especially in your more like demonic and uh, uh, maybe even like lizard people and stuff always use leathery skin, dude. And I'm always like, man, you know, if somebody said I had leathery skin, I would be ticked off, dude. I'm moisturized. I take care of my body. You know, I, I bet a lot of these cryptids do too. And, you know, humans are just sitting there calling leathery bodies. Well, and the thing too, man, is that like, he lives or it, you know, I don't want to assume it's gender, but the, this creature lives in the desert. You know, maybe it can't get a good moisturizing regimen in, yeah. you know, right. like it's dry out here. Yeah. Just don't be a hater. Yeah. Don't be a hater. And, you know, the red eyes, right? They're probably like, actually, it's more of like a translucent blue, but your brake lights are making them red. Well, and that that also is a, a theme with a lot of cryptids, though, is the red glowing eyes, man. Right. Um, that's also a thing with shadow people, which we'll cover shadow people at some point. But they also have red eyes. And I'm like, what is it about these cryptids that they all have red eyes? I don't really get that. Yeah, maybe it has something to do with them being nocturnal. Yeah. It makes me feel like it's not real. That is but <laughs> The uh, for some reason it makes it seem like it's a collective delusion. Yeah, when every creature, uh, like some of them are paranormal, some are cryptids, they all have red eyes. I just start getting skeptical for some reason. I want to meet a cryptid with beautiful green eyes. Wouldn't that be lovely? Like if Mothman had piercing blue eyes or something. Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, baby blue eyes, the Mothman. You just get lost in his gaze. Yeah, like this. You have beautiful eyes that i can gaze into forever well chris ml got a lot of these demon flyer stories more demon flyers let's get another one yeah so he's got a couple that went hiking and had a had a reported sighting okay their culture knew about it now i only had that report then i got another one from the owl's head mountains further up in death valley from a couple that were up there doing photography for a magazine and they had seen a large winged figure one night as they were heading back to camp soaring over some rocks and they lost sight of it and then that night they heard they were in their tent rooftop tent on their truck and they heard something rustling around by the fire and when the husband poked his head out with the flashlight he described the same type figure that then flapped its wings and you know went up in the air and circled a couple times and then took off and the wife said all she saw was a large object jump into the air that's all she was able to see from so first off that sounds like a lovely job you and your yeah. wife are going to the mojave and taking pictures yeah love that yeah, wonderful yeah photographers i feel like have pretty awesome lives yeah it would be really Especially nice if you're like a national geographic photographer like i bet you get to go to some baller places and see some super cool things it's probably true but i mean including in the including the demon flyer the demon flyer but I mean, in the end, basically what he saw was just a big dark creature in the air. 
Yeah, and uh, this is, I'm starting to think this demon flyer is a California condor. It, it honestly could be at this point because I'm not totally sold on any of these stories. And if you're not familiar with condors, dude, it's a scary looking bird. It is. I mean, it's a big it's guy. gigantic. It's scary looking. It's got black feathers. I mean, if could you imagine if that thing dropped a dead donkey baby in front of you dude that would scare the crap out of me it would be terrifying man i would be like this is inexplicable i would i would use the word inexplicable if i if i'm alone in the desert and some giant flying creature drops a dead animal on me yeah that is the worst thing that could happen apart from getting eaten by a bear it's nighttime dead animal lands at your feet from the sky dude it honestly it could just be a vulture yeah, it could be a vulture. I mean, they got some big vultures out there, too. But, yeah, man, I'm thinking, especially when they said it was five foot, I was like, dude, that could be a condor. Yeah, yeah, it could. That could be a condor. Well, and the other, when you when you account for the fact that humans are really bad at being witnesses for anything, right? like, it is the least re- reliable evidence is uh, an eyewitness. Right. So it could have been, like, three feet or two feet. Like, not even that big, but in their head, because it was scary, it became very large. Yeah, right. So, I don't know. But we do have a third uh, third demon flyer witness, Chris, and uh, we found this one on YouTube. Now, I then got in the comments section a, a thing from a gentleman who had seen the same thing along the same stretch of road five years later, and he described as the same, but five feet tall. Could be several of them, though, right? Well, well, obviously, you, if there's anything, there's got to be a breeding population of anything. I don't care if it's a, a wood rat or, you know, right. a mouse. It, right. They so, die, they breed, they die, they breed, they die. Yeah, to see a small one and then a larger one, that would that would give you some sort of idea of a population. So my favorite thing here is that we're already extrapolating the breeding population size of the demon flyer. Yeah, right. It's just like a wood mouse. It's the same same concept. Yeah. It, it, if you got one, you got two, and they're breeding. See, but I, I don't really like... I, I think cryptids are fun, but I think I prefer the paranormal because it's like less... It's, it's harder to explain. But with cryptids, right. it's more like, this is a weird creature that we just haven't found yet in the end. Right. You know? Yeah. And when you try to bring it down to earth like that, it just doesn't feel as enjoyable of a story. Right. Yeah. You, this thing had to come from a different dimension, come from an outer space in a UFO or something, mm-hmm. or some kind of demon from hell, not like a breeding animal that we just haven't found yet yeah like with demon flyer i want it to be from hell yeah, i don't it's actually want it... a demon right yeah. yeah yeah i want to be scary right and demons are created not bred yeah so you know a little disappointed there i was hoping for a little bit more deep lore but it was mainly people saw some uh some you know weird bird-like creature yeah that was a desert. disappointing cryptid tale so all right you got to bring me back up all right chris we're coming back with Hitchhiker Road Goat. There's got to be so many of them. There is a a long phenomenon in America, apparently, of travelers seeing ghosts on the road. Absolutely. I I wasn't as familiar with this. I know it is kind of like an archetype in movies and stuff, but apparently these sightings are like all over the place. one, the road ghost phenomenon. What is that? (laughs) That is, I get a lot of stories from truckers. And truckers, obviously, because they're out at all hours of the night and they're in, in some pretty forlorn areas and a lot of times it takes the form of they'll see a uh, woman by the side of the road or what looks like a woman when they get up to it uh, it either wisps away or just steps back into the shadows and, and then isn't trying to get a ride and then some people have described that they you know actually stopped to see if they needed help and, and the, the woman or figure would just let out a blood curdling scream and run off. And so this one actually scares me a bit. Yeah. That's a little terrifying. 
Yeah, and I I listened to this while driving at like 11 p.m. in the backwoods. Oh my god! Of yeah. my state, you, you were waiting for somebody to pop out and disappear, weren't you? My head was on a swivel because I was like, "Oh my god, dude, is there a road ghost out here?" Yeah, I'm not trying to mess with it. Well, here's the thing, dude. Even country people walking down a highway at 2 a.m. at night, even if it isn't a ghost, is scary. <laughs> it's not who you want to be around. That's not what you want to be doing. I if they're real, yeah. <laughs> if they're if they're well-to-do country folk, they're in bed. They got work in the morning. Yeah, there's not many good reasons for you to be walking on a highway at 2 a.m. It's bad. It's only a bad thing. And, like, if somebody disappeared out of your line of sight, dude, yeah, there's probably a reason for that. Well, Chris, we so have that's just like it's just a terrifying proposition. Just stay away. Stay away. <laughs> Don't or drive faster. Drive <laughs> away faster. Nothing scarier than being alone on a dark road and there being another person there. That's just yeah. the worst situation. Terrifying. So we have our first story of road ghosts. We have a couple of these. We okay, got a trucker because we love our truckers. Yeah. It's all road ghosts. They make up 90% of the coast to coast AM audience, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, probably at least 75% of ours. <laughs> it's that also shout fantastic. out to the truckers. You're the lifeblood of America. True be that, dude. That's so real. All right. So first trucker story of a road ghost. So many people seem to to have these interactions. And I got one story from a trucker. He said that he was going along and he sees a guy in a trench coat. Well, it looks like a guy in a trench coat with a hat on standing under the underpass with his head down. He thought he's hitchhiking and he, he drives by. The trucker was with his wife, comes up to another bend in the road, and here's the same guy standing there in the same Jeez. outfit with the same weird body posture, right? Head down, standing at the side of the road. Now, there had been cars that had passed him along the way. So he goes, you know, they could have picked him up and they passed me and then they let him out again. And goes, so I pass him and my wife remarks, hey, that's the same guy. He goes, we go another 40 miles and this time no one passes us. We don't see anybody. We're the only ones on the road. It's about three in the morning now because we come up to a turn and there's the same guy standing at the side of the road with the same weird body posture, the same duster and hat. And he goes, he had his head down, but this time when we went by, he looked up and he goes, all I could see was this real gaunt shadowy face. Oh. And my wife was like, well, that's don't freaky. Stop. Emma. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep going. <laughs> that's a good one, dude. That's a good ghost story. That's a pretty good ghost story. That's fun because I also like ghost stories when they aren't too much. You know, they aren't like totally crazy. They're just like uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, could you imagine like every 20 to 40 miles seeing what appears to be the same guy on the side of the road, dude? That's weird, man. That would be a good act one of a horror movie. Like, yeah, that's a good intro good. to make that's you uncomfortable. very good, yeah. Very positive stuff there on the uh, storytelling scale. Yes. Need a good need a good backstory for the uh, duster-wearing, you know, guy on the side of the road, man. I'm going to have to think of that one. Dude, write it up, man. That'll be our, our next project after the um, the CIA musical yeah, about CIA, JFK. JFK assassination musical. Yeah, yeah then that's, then that's we'll coming. yeah then we'll break out the road ghost uh, road uh, horror ghost script horror script. Yes. So we're not something that because this guy just blew past the road ghost, right? He wasn't yeah. he wasn't messing with it. No, we, I'm not picking him up. We got some guys who decided to pick up the road ghost. Picking up the ghost. Yes. It, it, he picked up a woman hitchhiker and she's sitting there quietly and he looks over the second time and now she looks like a, a corpse and he nails the brakes. And when he looks again, she's gone. And then when he stopped at the truck stop, uh, this little diner, not really a truck stop, mm -hmm. further down, he, he, the waitress said, you look kind of shaken, you know, what you need coffee or whatever. And he, because you're not going to believe this. And she goes, oh, you saw her too. Oh, geez. And he's like, what? And he goes, she, all we, the rumor is she was some girl that was killed on the road. And now. She's she, still there. Yeah. Haunts the road, dude. That's a bad haunting. That's a bad haunting. Uh, 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 highway ghost 
that's a terrible haunting dude that's a bad you don't want to get that haunting uh, assigned to you dude it's a bad gig honestly i'd much rather have the haunted house gig at least you get yeah, to stay haunted indoors house gig you know even like a, a haunted like natural area would be better but a haunted highway ghost <laughs> haunted boring, yosemite dude. I would do, yeah. Yeah. All you get is like people throwing out their McDonald's bags, dude. Poopy diapers. It's a lot of littering. That I like I like the idea that, that there's a ghost that just haunts people who litter. Maybe that's right. Thing. That would be nice. That would be a positive thing the underworld could do for us. Yeah. Protect the protect the environment. Yeah. Remember, coast to coast PM listeners, if you see something say something is that is that about littering i thought always thought that was about like spying on your neighbors no it's about it's purely about littering it's only littering (laughs) okay i thought that was like some mccarthy era stuff no absolutely not it's about it's about road ghosts i would never be pro joseph mccarthy (laughs) on this podcast can't do it man can't do it well we got more guys that try to pick up the ghost all right yeah so that he stopped his truck and because he the girl was standing there and she looked like she was in party clothes. That's what she described. He said, you know, it's not something you'd be out in the desert in. And he goes, I thought maybe she got in a fight with her boyfriend and he booted her out of the car and, you know, the poor things. And he said that she came closer to the window where he could see and that she was covered with blood. And that when she looked up at him, she let out this hideous scream. And he goes, she totally turned into mist she just like vaporized and and poof all right they're definitely adding that to our uh horror story out in the middle of the desert road tales well and the thing about these stories too is that there's not really anything else that this could be right you know like yeah. It, apart from just a straight up hallucination that someone had or them lying it, it's a situation where like you pick someone up that person screams and then disappears in your car or yeah. someone approaches your car covered in blood. They scream and then they just turn into mist for sure, dude, that would, I would have peed my pants. <laughs> it's not a good way. To... I would have peed all over myself, dude would have changed my pants. You, you can't stop for hitchhikers is what I'm learning. Uh, yeah. Cause there's like, uh, there's a good percentage that they're going to kill you. And then there's a decent percentage there, a ghost. What does that leave in that this is going to be a positive experience for me? Yeah, there, there's not much out there. This for is a you 5% positive experience. What percent of hitchhikers do you think are ghosts? At least 15%. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, so, and then you like, it, you like that percentage? I do like that. I don't know why I think that's fair, but it just feels right. That it 50% feels that feels like an accurate number. It's not me. too much, but it's not too little, right? It's a right. sweet spot. Well, yeah. what's interesting too is that ML talks about uh road ghost sightings throughout um the the history of America, all the way back to um uh you know colonial times when there would be like people on the side of the road with like a lantern or something that they would yeah would disappear. Did. You get in the Conestoga wagon and you see the uh, the traveling drifter, right? Yeah, and the, the coolest one was there's a story of a guy, and it was during uh, the railroad times. Uh, I think it was, you know, 1800s. And the conductor saw a man in the middle of the, the railroad with the lantern. So he had to stop the, the train because he saw him like way ahead. Uh, he stops the train, guy disappears. And then he gets the train going again, but it takes so long to get moving that when they turned the corner, the uh, the railroad was completely broken. The train would have crashed if he hadn't stopped. Whoa, dude. Yeah, that's a weird one, too. Yeah, dude. That's a little like guardian angel, like protection spirit type thing, man. That's kind of cool. What if they're all just benevolent? Like all these people, like when they get you to stop, it's because you'll get into a car crash like Ooh. in five seconds. Yeah. Like, if he would have kept on going and didn't pick up the screaming banshee lady. Yeah. And, like, her screaming was probably right at the moment that he would have died. <gasps> dude. That's going in the script. That's, That's the going twist. in the script. That's going in the script, dude. That's the twist. In That's the going end. in the script, dude. It's actually, 
the whole movie you think it's this angry, vengeful, vindictive ghost trying to get its comeuppance on the living and the whole time the ghost was trying to save their lives. Trying to save them. And they don't listen. They die at the end. They die at the end because they didn't listen to the screams. Dude, this is a great script that we're writing. A right good now. script, dude. We should call ML. We might have a book for him. Yeah, we got a book. We got a cowboy monster hunter book for you. Yeah, let's get ML on the podcast. He's 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 a bro, dude. I like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's fun. Yeah, he's just having fun with stories. And that's, that's you know, where I think Coast to Coast shines is when you're having fun with stories. When you're having fun with stories, dude. Just don't sell me time. something. Don't sell me a book. Don't sell me some kind of, some kind of like poop pill or something you know just just sell me a story dude well yeah, there's a there's like a lot of is. supplement ads in between these episodes that we haven't shown yet we yeah, may need to diarrhea pill me just give me some good stories yeah coast to coast you have no idea how many supplement ads and freaking like emergency preparedness food and all that stuff that i've had to listen to because this show man here at coast to coast pm we will not hawk doo-doo pills no pills being sent from us it's not gonna be some pill well chris <laughs> next up <laughs> i don't know what to say to that <laughs> just continuing okay so moving off of ghosts there are also these things called spook lights are you familiar with that i have no idea what a spook light is i'm guessing it's kind of like a that swamp gas or something like that yeah, kind of similar. It's basically just like these balls of light kind of in the distance, but it's not UFOs. They're not like in the sky necessarily. It's more like close to the ground. Okay. So it's spooky lights. Spooky uh, lights. Yeah. So this is this is something that George asks about, right? Let's get into these spook lights. And, uh, you know, ML gives a very normy answer. He does not... He does not give us the uh, it's ghost answer, which is kind of... Spooky. Absolutely. Tell me about the theory. What, what are the spook lights out there in time slips? Uh, spook lights uh, was a term originally that a lot of the miners would use for light glowing lights they'd see out over the desert. And a prosaic uh, explanation was that it was uh, discharges from heavy men minerals like uranium deposits and stuff like that. Uh, the more folklore was that they were the ghosts of Indian shaman or miners that had been murdered. And now they've actually tying them more towards earth. They tie it with earthquake lights, which they think the tectonic plates crushing granite release piezoelectric energy, which causes an electrical discharge. Originally, it was something that was considered a ghost, a spook. Um, now some people are more trying to give it a more secular, I guess, uh, explanation that it's um, tied to geomagnetic or tectonic forces so these lights are real oh they're real yeah they're they're very well documented very well documented lights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what a cool answer that they're er earthquake lights yeah it is it is a pretty cool bit of science that he dropped there which i appreciated uh that was yeah. awesome yeah it's like tectonic shifts creating like this electromagnetic charge and then it's creating these like balls of like light energy in the right. air like literally in the air like that's so cool. Yeah, and and that's the thing is that they have been very well documented by by actual scientists, right? Not right. just like you know desert enthusiasts. This is like a real phenomenon. Yeah. So they've been working to figure out like why is this even happening? Like where yeah, is this why energy is this coming happening? from? Yeah. The the like buildup of minerals is kind of an interesting explanation for that. Mm -hmm. I thought, but yeah. I really like the earthquake hypothesis. Yeah, it's almost cooler than ghosts, honestly. Yeah, it's almost cooler than ghosts, dude. It's like a little ball of light from the planet, man. That's very cool. I also, I I, I yearn back for the old days, you know, when I was just a, a, a simple miner in the Mojave Desert, seeing ghost lights out in the far distance, you know, what, what would have that been like? That would have been a time to be alive. That would have been a time to be alive. You would have only been like 32 when you died, though. I wouldn't have made it very long, but I would have had- crippling alcoholism mostly alcoholism and gambling and the only sex you've had was with a prostitute if red dead redemption taught me anything all those statements are true <laughs> so chris i'm not sure if you're familiar but before the united states uh you know went west there were people that were living here already it was peopled already you're it, telling me it, it was peopled and these these native uh these native americans if you will um had holy sites 
And some of these holy sites were in the Mojave Desert. Okay. Now, specifically, there were large rocks uh, that that were very holy to to Native Americans uh, or to certain tribes. Um, And uh, an old white man came in 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 the 1900s and decided to make those holy rocks into a UFO mecca of sorts in the Mojave (laughs) Desert. Cool. So let's just take this and make it about aliens. Was basically yeah. what happened. White man's burden one, Native Americans zero. So let's jump into the story of the Integratron. Originally, that was a Native American holy site that only the the chief could approach the giant rock and touch it because it was considered uh, an energy source. And then um, we had people starting to live there that claimed that they could charge batteries off the the energy coming off the rock. And then a UFO uh, guy took it over and said that UFOs came down and gave him plans for a a machine to build, which he built, started to build called Integraton, which is out here. And uh, it became a a mecca for for, uh, everything from new age healers to UFO fans. But originally, it started as a power center for a Native American tradition. Now, tell me you looked into this, because I've got to know more. Oh, baby, I went down a rabbit hole on the (laughs) Integratron. This is 100% real. It is still standing to this day. Integratron. The Integratron. Okay. Which is the most 1957 alien piece of technology you could have. You yeah. call it the Integratron. Integratron. So the Integratron is a 38-foot-tall cupola structure des- designed by ufologist and contactee George Van Tassel. What is a cupola? Oh, I'll show you a picture of it here, Chris. So it's a it's a domed-type structure. Okay, um, so it, it's essentially observatory. It yeah, looks like you, an observatory, kind of. Yeah, if you've ever seen an observatory, it looks very similar to that. So it, it has windows along the side. It's white. It's domed. Um, you just don't it, have a yeah. giant telescope that comes out of the top. No, you just have a big rock in the middle instead of a giant telescope. Oh, really? Yeah, so because the rock gives you the energy, right? Okay, Because it's it. Yeah. So this... So what's uh, up with this rock? Yeah, so... George, this this abductee, said that he was abducted by aliens from Venus, and they gave him the plans to build his structure. Now, he said that this structure that he has built that stands to this day was capable of anti-gravity, time travel, and human rejuvenation. Wow, that's some awesome properties. Yeah, so uh, he he built this. He lived under under the rock for a while. It's literally just a giant rock that said to hold some secret energy, um, and then ended up dying. But it was funded by some of the richest. Did people the rock in- kill him? No, no, the rock didn't kill. Him. Oh, okay, the rock did. But uh, the the funding for this building came from individuals like Howard Hughes, who was uh, one of the richest men in America at the time. Yeah, he was like Boeing or something like that, wasn't he? Or American yeah. Airlines or something. He had something to do with planes. He was aerospace, yeah. Aerospace, I, I, don't, I forget exactly yeah. which company. Uh, so, yeah, this guy just, there was this Native American rock that was a holy site, and he was like, I'm just going to build a big old Integratron around it that will allow me to rejuvenate myself and travel through time. And was he successful in those ventures? Uh, Yes. No, just kidding. He was not. Okay. He was not successful in any of those ventures. Uh, I was like, huh? And now it's just a weirdo site for for people to go to. Yeah, any new age, I imagine, especially. Yeah, but the, it does have a little bit of a mecca feel to it. In in mecca, they uh, go around what is it the the Kabbalah or the Kabbal or something like that, which is a giant rock that came that many claim is a meteorite. Yeah, it's probably similar, honestly. He tries to do some 1950s science explanation about how it works. So he said that strong ultra-wideband EMF created by the Integratron would resonate with your cell's frequency and recharge the cellular structure like it was a battery. Wow. So his idea was that the human body was... So Donald Trump was right. We are just big batteries. You know, according to Trump, yes, this would... He should go to the Integratron to get rejuvenated. Maybe that's what he's been doing. Maybe that's what he's been doing. That's why he looks great. Lost some LBs. About to run for president. He got recharged. Yeah, but that is is the Integratron, man. Uh, And, you know, now 
it, it's really nothing there. They were apparently planning on turning it into a disco at one point, which is interesting, but it never ended up happening. Disco rock. Yeah, the disco rock. You got to love it. All right. So anyways, that that ended up being a little bit disappointing. <laughs> it's definitely hoping... weird, though. It's, it's definitely, definitely weird. Definitely weird. I was kind of hoping that there was like some healing properties to this rock for some reason. No, no, he was just a crazy man. No, just a crazy man with a big rock that he built built a building around. Yeah. So, Chris, we got cool. a couple callers. Okay. We, we we have a few callers from this episode. And the first one I thought was just a little bit funny because I know you said, you know, hey, maybe, buddy, you shouldn't be going out by yourself. So a caller asks, hey, can I can I go out with you uh, to, to right. the desert and just gets rejected immediately? Um. I just wanted to ask ML if he had planned on doing any meetup camping trips in the Mojave with any of his fans from like the YouTube channel or, or his website. Uh, you know, I've been approached to do that. The only problem is the insurance and liability end of that. Legal guys tell me that they got to be very careful with that. So, so as of right now, no. Which I love <laughs> that excuse. This guy just does not want to hang out with these people. No, he doesn't want to hang out with these people. He knows out the, how weird. Out in the desert by himself with these people? Yeah, it's hey, do you want to go hang out with strangers who are really into your paranormal YouTube channel? Yeah. In the desert alone? Is that no. what you want to do? Sleep next no. in the night? He doesn't want to do no. that. Oh, it's legal. The insurance. What do you what insurance? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking oh, the, about? The, my team of lawyers is telling me I shouldn't do that. It's like, <laughs> no. You don't want to hang out with these people. Yeah, this guy with the Mojave Desert book for six ninety nine and his YouTube channel has a team of lawyers, apparently. Yeah, this guy is definitely an introvert, and like it's literally his worst fear to be surrounded by a bunch of people just adoring him and telling him stories that he's like, I've heard that one a million times. I was the one who told you that story. Please. You don't become a desert enthusiast by wanting to be around humans. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. All right. So next, Chris, we got a caller. And this caller maybe saw a dog or maybe a man or maybe something else, but it was kind of creepy. This is just the quality of the callers. I just want to make sure that you got a taste of this. Hi. Um, yes. Yeah, so about six months ago, um, my husband and I were driving um, around 1 a.m. And... Um, we swerved and we both saw well he saw what he thought was a dog in the road and i saw a dog and a person sitting with the dog in the middle of the road we have um, a camera in our car so um, the next day we went and looked at the footage and um at the same time he still sees only a dog but i see a uh, what looks kind of like a ghost shape of a person sitting with the dog um and it's weird because we've put it up in our local pages on facebook and everybody sees different things okay so first off i just have to complain about the the quality of callers on coast to coast lately has been very poor this yeah. has nothing to do with the desert yeah. We're talking about the desert, and she calls in. This and then woman two, just wanted her to talk and tell a story. She just wanted to tell her story, and then she's like, there's a picture. I think maybe there was a dog or man on the road, and then it's really blurry, and when we post it on Facebook, uh, everyone sees something different. It's like, yeah, it's like a Rorschach test, dude. Yeah, it's like, right. it's because it's a blurry, dark photo from your car. Right, right, exactly, exactly. That's That, that, that was pretty funny, but I'll also say that, like I said, dude, when you're driving around the country, man, Late at night, dude. Who knows what you're going to see? You know, you see weird stuff, I guess. Who you see knows weird stuff. what you're going to see? Yeah. And so those things, I feel like so many people that call into this show are just really, like, lonely. Yeah. You know, so I feel like a little bad, but also I'm like, stay on topic. You yeah, know? what? It's like 3 a.m., dude, when yeah. this person is calling in and telling this story. But she's married. Yeah. She should, She has someone to talk to, I guess, Maybe. in a lively Facebook community. Maybe. So there's another caller. This is, once again, not relevant to the Mojave Desert, but this one is kind of creepy, dude. Okay. And I think this also shows how good George is at segueing the conversation into something that's relevant to him. Uh, my mother and I were driving down the road coming from um, Disneyland, and it had to be 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. 
we were the only car on the road. And then all of a sudden, a car starts to pull up next to me, and I look over, and there is a person-looking thing in the car, but then it looks over at me, and with this big grin, it had a demon face. Um, It was not a costume. There's no way that this was a costume. The smile was um, like small teeth between large teeth that were needles, and the eyes were completely blackened out. Do some people, ML, like Tony, attract these kinds of things? Well, there definitely seems to be people that have uh, repeat events. So that's super creepy. That's super creepy. Dude, a mouth of needles, not down for that. But uh, that seems to me like this woman was exhausted and then having to drive. Was well, like out in the sun all day, yeah. been in Disneyland all day, then had to like drive. That seems like some, like she probably shouldn't have been driving actually. You think it was it was just like a straight up like I'm sleep deprived hallucination heat stroke, like that? Heat stroke, yeah. sleep deprivation, exhaustion. And then, dude, your brain starts doing weird stuff to you. Yeah, it could have been. I also just, I, I love George's ability to segue a question into something relevant for the guest to answer. Because right. when they're calling in, they're calling in for the guest. But so often, they just tell a story that has nothing to do with what they're they talking about. They just want to talk, dude. They just want to tell a story. Yeah. You know, they hear this guy on the radio, and they want to tell their story now. And th- that's they another... want to tell their ghost story, right? That's an- yeah, that's another funny thing about George versus Art is that back in the day, Art would literally say, "What does that have to do with what we're talking about?" Right. Like he would interrupt them and stop them. And George doesn't do that, so I think it just gives people free reign. So because they're not being shamed on air, they feel more comfortable doing it, right? Versus I think back in the day, people didn't want to be shamed on air by Art, which which would happen. But you know, this is probably why George has the job now is because there is something to that it's these people consider george a friend Mm -hmm. now they've listened to him for countless hours talk to them every single day over and over and over again and typically about stuff that they're not allowed to talk to with other people Mm mm-hmm And so there's got to be this like very close connection for a lot of the listeners to George. That's interesting. It's basically like a really deep parasocial relationship because I think the difference, like you said, is that these are more taboo topics that most people don't want to communicate with you about. Like if you're at work, you can't talk about this stuff. And then the other aspect of it is that you can't interact with them in some way. And you can finally get through and like talk to them on the, on the phone and share your story to a bunch of people, you know? Right. And it's, it's its own little community as weird of a community as it is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, another reason why I love ML Chris is because apparently he sleeps like John Wayne. And I think that's kind of fun. Play it. Yeah. When you go camping out that way, ML, do you go to sleep with one eye open? Uh, I usually sleep John Wayne style, which means I have a pistol on my chest. Just in case. Yes. Have okay. you ever had to use it? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I haven't had to use it. No. Pistol well, Chris, on the chest, dude. dude. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty fun. You know, yeah. I don't even care if it's true. I just like that he said that he sleeps Sean Wayne style. Yeah. I'll very take that. Good. Very nice. So, so that has been High Strangeness in the Mojave Desert featuring the author and enthusiast of The Desert, ML Berman. What do you, what'd you think, Chris? I liked ML. I liked ML. I'm going to give it four what was it flying demons yeah uh demon flyers demon flyer i'm gonna give it four demon flyers dude i'll give him four demon flyers too i thought he was pretty fun he was telling fun stories good stories desert stories not stories that i'm used to so because of their uniqueness to me i find them more terrifying yeah and you know i love a good ghost story i'm a huge fan of ghost stories 
And I just love that he mixed that into, you know, it was a little, little touch of everything. Any place it's 120 degrees during the day and 30 degrees at night is a horrifying place. That's true. It's not where you want to live, but no, you know, for, some people live there for some reason. Some people live there for some reason. And mm-hmm. that's why you're getting struck with all these insane paranormal events. You need to get out, get you some trees, get you some water, come back to real civilization, desert people. <laughs> the, the, yeah, get out of Tatooine, my friends. Yeah, get out of the desert. It's not good for humans. Yeah. Well, that has been our episode today, Chris. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. We love you. Appreciate you. If you like the show, please share it with a friend. Give us five stars on whatever app you're listening to us, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, potentially. And uh, that's all we got. We will see you next week. All conspiracy, all the time. Later. <laughs>